coming up next on Business Minds Coffee Chat. We have foundation values, which are the values that are influenced by our culture, by our religion, by the people that we're surrounded by. And then we have values that we're focusing on right now. Like I'm focusing on education. I'm going to school right now. I'm focusing on work. I'm focusing on family. What is it that you're focused on and that's important? And then we have our vision values. Like I want to be able to integrate all these skills. I want to be able to run a department. I want to be able to um, make an impact in the society and communities. Then we get to look at, okay, what's the gap in between where you're at right now and the vision? Hey guys, it's Jay, and I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered how I have this much energy and this much fun when I record Business Minds Coffee Chat? Well, part of it is the incredible guests we bring on, but the other part is how much I focus on high performance, both in terms of getting to the gym every morning and also how I fuel my body and my brain. You see, before I record any episode of this podcast or do any work that requires my total focus, when I need to perform at my best... I have a secret weapon that makes me feel like my best self. It's called Ambitious Edge. Edge is a nootropic drink mix that comes in two amazing and delicious flavors, berry and tropical. You just take one scoop, mix it in water, and then the magic starts to happen. Brain fog, gone. Distractions, they've run away. Energy, your tank is filled. And don't worry, it's 100% natural. And if you know me, you know how important that is. There's zero grams of sugar, so you won't crash, and it's jam-packed with ingredients that make your mind stronger day after day. And of course, as a listener of Business Minds Coffee Chat, I have totally got you guys hooked up. So when you go to ambitious.com and order Edge today, you're going to get $10 off your order when you use the promo code Coffee Chat. If you're ready to have the energy, the focus, and the drive you need to accomplish all of your goals and ambitions, just head to ambitious.com and use the promo code Coffee Chat to save $10 today. Having a strong online presence and engaging content that maximizes your brand's message and delivers results is a must-have today. With so many so-called web designers flooding the market, it's important to work with someone who truly has the knowledge and experience, is a trusted partner, who puts customers first, understands their business, and has a history of proven results. I trust my web development and maintenance to Chenzo Does Web. From web development to digital marketing content creation to SEO optimization, Chenzo does it all. When you're ready to level up your digital marketing strategy and grow your business, visit ChenzoWeb.com. He does web so you can do you. And now here's my conversation with Sonia Farrell. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business consulting. Hey, everyone. I'm Jay Shear, and welcome to another episode of Business Minds Coffee Chat. The goal of this show is to share insights, help to lift and inspire others, and deliver relevant, meaningful, and actionable content. I'm excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about breakthroughs and transformation in life and business. Our guest today is a best-selling author, speaker, values coach, emotional intelligence trainer, a wife and mother, and an advocate of personal growth for success. With a BS in industrial engineering and a master's in organizational leadership, This California native made a transition from a 16-year corporate career to helping others tap into, embrace, and step fully into their brilliance. Please welcome the founder of Living Inspired Leadership, Sonia Farrell. Sonia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love your platform. I love what you've created to inspire and uplift, uplift other people. This is great. I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm grateful for you. So why don't we dive right in? Would you share with us where your story begins and at what point did you discover your purpose? Oh my goodness. Uh, 
This is a great question. And my story really begins with, uh, and it's coming to realization now, because let me back up. Uh, my parents are immigrants from Mexico. So I was born here. And then after kindergarten, we moved to Mexico. I, I did my elementary in Mexico. So I learned the language, the culture. And then um, I came back six years later. And as a kid, you adapt. And I just thought, okay, this is where we're going to end up living. I never practiced English while I was there because there weren't any other people to practice English with. Hmm. So I totally forgot. It, it completely erased from my memory. Coming back as a seventh grader was a challenge for me because I got to relearn the, the English language and then trying to fit in. So now I'm able to understand the people that I serve even more because I focus on Latinas that are in the tech industry. But um, I just love and I am committed to creating awareness and growth in individuals so that they can live a happier and fulfilling life. And I was in that mindset of, I mean, once I did my master's in leadership, I knew that this was a path that I wanted to go in because it made me see into myself for the first time. Hmm. So dig, dig into that a, a little deeper for us. What was that realization? What did you uncover? And how did that open your eyes? So what it uncovered were the stories, you know, why was I in a uh, victim mentality? Why did I have um, the fears to take action on certain things? What were my shadows? Where were those coming from and then learning to break those patterns, learning to see, oh, the, the way that I'm acting is because this happened in the past and it's just a story. So how do I shift now? So I learned a lot of mindset. I learned a lot of awareness. And then um, once I knew that this was the work that I wanted to bring forward, I was stuck in the how. I was stuck in the, well, I don't have the experience. Well, um, you know, what if I fail and all these things that were holding me back. And then I said, well, I'm going to go back to the school. They had a leadership center. And, and I said, I'm going to start volunteering to get experience mm. on the things that I want to start creating. And I started with a group of other leadership facilitators. And what we did was we brought in on the weekends, we facilitated workshops on emotional intelligence, on values, and on effective or compassionate communication. And the, the, we were bringing these programs to nonprofit, nonprofits. And it was one called Maximizing Opportunities for Mothers that Had Been Incarcerated. So this was a huge um, eye-opener for me in terms of just by bringing these three things, we were able to create awareness. And I remember um, one of the moms saying, once she saw, you know, these are all the values that you are able to develop. These are the different faces, you know, the learning, the um, going to school, the gaining new skills. And it was such an eye opener in terms of what are we exposed to and what are we not exposing ourselves to. And seeing that, she was able to say, wow, I can develop other values, other skills, and starting to see how they were breaking these old patterns that they weren't bringing to their kids mm. was huge, was huge. And that's when I said, oh my God, this is really the work that I want to bring forward because creating awareness is being able to create that happiness, being able to commit to creating happiness for ourselves because we have the choice. Wow. Beautiful. So making that transition from a, a corporate culture and a corporate type environment to entrepreneurship and, and starting your own business with a, a purpose that connected with your soul and with your heart, what was that first step like? So when you made that leap? I had a lot of stories that, you know, the fear of not being perfect the fear of, you know, am I going to provide enough value? Am I going to be good enough? Am I going to, so all those stories were holding me back and I can see how that 
can happen to a lot of people. But it wasn't until I finally said, okay, what's really important? I get to look at the vision. I get to look at the impact that I get to create. And that's more important. So I committed to start taking action, to be okay with making mistakes, to be okay. Because every time we fail, we make a mistake, we learn. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't allowing myself to go through that. Very interesting. Was that a difficult journey to reduce or eliminate those limiting beliefs? Was it a difficult, I think it, it just took a while, right? And it, it, what it takes is really starting to take those risks, putting yourself, doing things that don't feel comfortable. Those are the things that are going to create growth. So doing those things is what it really took. And, I'll, and I'll, the help, having a coach, someone to hold your hand, someone to keep you accountable. Because when I didn't have a coach, I was just sitting there waiting and things are not going to happen by just sitting there and waiting. And it's so relevant to times right now when we get to move forward. And I think I shared this earlier that I see this as an opportunity. Um, I didn't share with you, but five years ago, I had a stroke and it forced me to slow down because I was just, you know, go, go, go doing so many things. And I remember a family member telling me, hey, you got to stop and smell the roses. You're just like, go, go, go. You're just... So in your head, you're not connecting with yourself. And that allowed me to really stop and reconnect to what really matters to me. And it was my family and being of service. And by being of service is I am giving to these nonprofits. I am giving to um, high school and middle schools and even college students that are underserved who didn't have a mentor. Because I feel like I didn't have a mentor growing up. I mean, my father, I I say my father was my greatest mentor because he encouraged going to college. He made that important. And my father is a funny guy because he said, I don't know who you're going to marry. So you need to go to school and and have a backup plan (laughs) so that you can sustain yourself. But here's the thing. I didn't know what was out there. He didn't go to college, so he couldn't really mentor me. Mm. So that's why I think... um, that area that I serve to go back and to give is also important to me. And they're taking this back to what I was saying that it's so relevant because I feel that right now we're being forced to, to stop. Like I said, my stroke made me, it was a force, a really force stop for me because I was in an acute rehab for a month in the hospital. So I really couldn't do a lot of things on my own. And right now, the things that are happening, I feel like it's a gentle slowdown so that we can really stop, so that we can really reflect and see it as an opportunity to create something maybe that we've put aside, something that we said, oh, that's not going to work. I feel that this is the time to bring up that opportunity. What, what a wonderful way to, to look at, at things. And it reminds me of the, you know, when you were sharing the story of, of the stroke and what you went through rehabbing and, and coming back from that, it reminds me of the, of the statement that life happens for us, not to us. So when you reframe the stories, as, as you shared earlier on, and look at that as an opportunity, look at that as a gift that was given to you that has mm-hmm. allowed you to learn and has allowed you to reassess and reevaluate and do the, the difficult work that we have to do internally in order to be able to show up and serve others. Yeah, that's really what, what it did. And that's the way I saw it as an opportunity. It's like, okay, I'm giving a second chance and what really matters to me, what's really important. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. So you talked about values. I'd like to delve into that. And how how does one identify their core values and why are they so important to success? Yeah. And, um, and a lot of times people are like, you're a values coach. What does that mean? Uh, Because it's so, it's so broad And uh, really, we have foundation values, which are the values 
that are influenced by our culture, by our religion, by the people that we're surrounded by. And then we have values that we're focusing on right now. Like I'm focusing on education. I'm going to school right now. I'm focusing on work. I'm focusing on family. What is it that you're focused on and that's important? And then we have our vision values. Like I want to be able to integrate all these skills. I want to be able to run a department. I want to be able to um, make an impact in the society and communities. Then we get to look at, okay, what's the gap in between where you're at right now and the vision. And we look at different goals and under each, each goal value, there are skills. You know, a lot of times we could be missing that. I work with, uh, emerging professionals that are looking to advance in their career. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, how do we develop the skill of delegating authority uh, being seen? So that's one example of how I used the values coaching. Hmm. Very interesting. And, and certainly that is foundational to success in any area of life or business. Yes, yes. Um, one of my uh, values or vision values is um, intimacy and solitude. Solitude is so important. You know, I, I crave that just to be by myself so that I can be able to connect with myself, connect with my being, connect to the things that are important and evaluate. Am I creating the things that I want? Um, you attended one of my sessions where we got to evaluate ourselves. Am I being a 10 in relationships? And I want to say no, because I've been keeping myself so busy with other things that I haven't reached out to my friends. So now that I'm aware, I can make that an intention. Yeah, that's a, a really interesting process to go through that the self-awareness side of it. And, you know, it requires you being candid, transparent, being honest with yourself and spending the time to, to go through each of those questions and giving yourself a, a, a real self-assessment. It's uh, it can be an eye opener and it's not always the easiest situation to deal with. I, I think sometimes we like to tell ourselves certain stories that we are a certain way and, the reality is when you really delve deep and start to work on what's happening on the inside, you discover some things that can open your eyes. It's so true. And uh, that reminds me of, you know, when I was in corporate and I was maybe, I want to say three years into this position and uh, I was very resourceful. I learned everything. I was, you know, problem solver, I would investigate and figure out things and get projects completed. And then when it came to getting a promotion, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I, I was going, what happened? Um, and this was before doing my leadership um, masters. But later on, I got to see, you know, a lot of times we get blinded by the way we perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. But really, how are others perceiving you? <laughs> Right. And, and I was able to learn that, one, I didn't ask for authentic feedback. My, the feedback that I got was like, well, this person that you are training as your manager has a master's and you don't have a master's. And I said, okay. So, you know, asking for that authentic feedback in order to grow. Because a lot of times we don't like our feed, feedback. We take it as, a, as, oh, you know, offensive. And no, I invite people to take feedback as an opportunity to grow. Absolutely. And, and the other thing, what I learned is that a lot of times you think you're showing up as a leader, but if someone else is saying, oh, I, I don't know your name, what does that say? Are you really showing up? Yeah, I haven't taken the time to really get to know the team or the people around me. Exactly. So, yeah. So talking about feedback and leadership, do you, in, in your line of work, do you believe or, or give 360 degree evaluations? There's nothing quite like the intoxicating aroma of fresh brewed coffee, the anticipation and the way that first sip makes you feel like you have the world at your fingertips. 
Since 2012, 1565 Artisan Coffee has been roasting the finest 100% pure Arabica coffee. Their coffee is small batch roasted in St. Augustine, Florida to capture the essence of life there. Brave, authentic, enduring, soulful, and honest. With five signature blends to choose from, there's plenty of happiness to enjoy. From their medium dark roast cannonball with notes of brown sugar, chocolate, and toasted marshmallow, to their light roast estuary blend with notes of cocoa, dark cherry, and mild citrus. One of my favorites is their medium roast stump knocker with notes of toasted pecan, chocolate, and stone fruit. When you're ready to discover your happy place and enjoy the perfect cup of coffee that makes you smile, visit 1565coffee.com. Get 15% off your order when you use promo code COFFEECHAT at checkout. And now let's get back to the show. I think it's really important and I ask people to get evaluations from those that they work with, those people that know them better. And then discuss that and then look at, okay, did you know this about yourself or how did you feel? And then cause that, that's really important. Again, like I said, a lot of times perception, the way we see ourselves is not the way we're showing up. The way we think we are showing up, it's really not the way we're showing up. So it's really good to get that feedback so that we can grow in areas so that we can show up the way we want to show up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. So you, you're a mindset coach in addition to many other areas. Why does mindset matter so much? And what are some of the strategies that you use to help someone develop a growth mindset? Yeah. Um, the mindset, it's really the shifting of, you know, if you're having a day where, Oh, you know, I committed that I was going to commit myself to be healthy, that I was going to run. And there may be a day where it's like, no, I'm not feeling like it. But if you have committed yourself, then keep your word. That's what really mindset is like keeping your word to yourself. Hmm. Um, The other part is um, a lot of times, you know, there's two options, right? You can either stay in the area where you're feeling contracted, where you're feeling fear, where you're feeling the victim, that's a mindset. Or you can shift into the other side, which is a second option where you can be abundant, where you can be positive, where you can be expansive. So we always have a choice. And that's what I tell people. And um, also when we are going in this fear or this pattern, you know, going through this pattern and we're just going around and it's not taking us anywhere. So the mindset is whatever you're doing right now is not working. What is it creating? Who else is it affecting? So it's time to, to try something different. So that's, does that make sense? It, it definitely does. Absolutely. So when you're working with someone, do you help them through different exercises, reading? Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, they're not seeing, um, that they're in that mindset. So I help them walk through, okay, what, what are the prices that you're paying right now? Who else is it affecting? Um, not just you, or how is it affecting you? And then we worked on um, other options. Well, what, what else can you try so that you can move out of that pattern? So that's one example. And then also create an intention and what are you committed to creating? And then having that accountability partner. It's so important to check, okay, I committed to doing something different and I did it. Because a lot of times we we like to work by ourselves and uh, it's hard. I mean, I, I thought that was a way to do it. I, for a long time, when I came to starting my business, I was doing things on my own. Well, that wasn't helping me. That was taking me longer. And uh, yeah, I suggest people always ask for help. And the other thing that I learned, and I don't know if it's just in a particular culture, but asking for help is seen as weakness. And uh, this was shared by one of my mentors recently. And it made me realize for the longest time, I did not ask for help. I was, you know, I'm capable, I'm going to do things on my own. Mm -hmm. And I was giving myself excuses. So see, here's a mindset. I was saying, the excuses of, oh, you know, I can't reach out. They're going to say no, they're too busy. So I was holding myself back. 
And now I'm in a different mindset of, I'm going to reach out. And if they say no, that means new opportunity. I reach out to someone else. Look, we, we all need one another. It's, I, I, once you're able to, to change the story that you're telling yourself and realize that asking someone for help doesn't mean that I'm not capable. It opens you up to new learnings. It opens you up to a whole world of possibilities. And so it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting one for me. See, and again, it's, it's creating that awareness. And that took me a while to create that awareness. When I started the master's program, I was so in this corporate program of go, 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 next meeting. There is no stop, breathe, create awareness. What's going on? You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's so important. Yes, it is. Definitely. Let, let's switch gears for a moment. Tell us about your Habits of Success program what came out of that experience that surprised you and how has it changed you? Yeah. Well, the habits for success was creating, created by finding, um, well, one people were asking, how do I stay motivated? How do I stay motivated? And I go, I can't motivate you if you don't have a particular desire. So it comes to what is your, the thing that you desire, the thing that you want to achieve. So what I did is I switched it to, you know, I'm just going to provide tips from in, especially in times right now where, you know, what if someone wants to start an online business? Where do I start? What does branding mean? And all that stuff. And also mindset, staying positive. So it was a combination of different influencers to bring practices that people can apply. You know, uh, I had one that spoke about happiness, creating happiness from the inside out. So it was just something to apply to relevant times. You know, if you're feeling um, fearful, if you're feeling like you're not being joyful, how do you create that practice to, to switch it? And again, it's kind of a mindset thing. Mm -hmm. So lessons that you learned through that experience and are there specific ways that you can tell that it changed you going through those um, interviews and, and listening to the, the types of, of responses that you received from these different influencers? You know, I definitely learned a lot from every speaker. Every speaker had something special to share because they were all experts in their area. Mm-hmm. So I learn about the importance of branding. I learned about the importance of, of um, creating something so simple to remind ourselves about happiness, gratitude. I learn about um, confidence. What does it mean? You know, how do you bring that forward? How do you develop it? So every speaker had something um, important to share, and there were over 20 of them. Wow. Outstanding. So how are you processing what's happening in the world today? And what are some of the specific tactics and actions that you're taking to stay focused and keep yourself inspired? You talked about motivation, but what specific tactics are you taking? Yeah, well, I was working uh, virtually already, I would say 80%, and then 20% I would do um, workshops um, in colleges in leadership conferences and then my own as well. So that's been the thing that has shifted to now virtual mm -hmm. and I, I'm navigating through that. Um, you know, I do miss the engagement and uh, I'm learning, but I think it, everything is, it's totally possible. It's totally possible. And, uh, what I do feel is for those that have completely lost their jobs because they're not essential right now. So what can they do? And I, I you put myself in their shoes and I, and I go back to when I was trying to figure out things on my own. And if I was to give them a strategy or a tactic, I would say the number one thing is to ask for support. And I love what I've seen. I don't know if you're aware about um, GMC, the car production industry, who, which opened a, a a department to now start producing essential medical equipment. Mm -hmm. And there's been individuals that have the capacity to manufacture things and they're, you know, producing the facial masks, they're producing the shields for medical staff. Yeah. 
Yeah. So there, there are ways and there are opportunities to innovate, but a lot of times we can't do it by ourselves. And I've been, uh, I shared a message earlier to reach out. You know, if you're a person that, let's say, wants to patent a new product, and reach out to me. You know, even if I'm not the expert, and even if I don't have the answer, I may know someone that can support you. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, reaching out and letting the word out. This is what I'm trying to create. And I think that's a great tactic. The other one is deep debrief with friends. You know, if I was talking to a person that's in the retail business and well, that's not essential right now. So the question is what to do. And my advice would be to um, debrief with people, look at your talents, look at your skills, because I'm sure that those can be transferred into something that's essential right now. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think staying connected is critically important. You know, reaching out, finding out how people in your community are doing. So staying engaged and focusing on solutions, focusing on where the opportunities are and helping people overcome the, the, the negativity that they may be exposed to. So there's you know, certain things that we should be limiting, such as the amount of, of TV, the amount of news, the amount of negative conversations that we're having, because all of those things block us and keep us from being able to see where the solutions and opportunities are and staying optimistic. So likewise, to echo what you were saying, it's debriefing, staying in touch with people, having the right kinds of conversations and helping them navigate and look for where those opportunities are. And it, it, the opportunity for others may look very, very different than what they may be looking at. So you have to be open to really any type of suggestion and idea. And, and I love some of the examples that you, that you pulled out and mentioned, such as you know, companies pivoting and looking at, at different ways of serving, filling a need in the marketplace. And you know, that, the actions that we take today, the right actions that we take today are extremely meaningful and they're going to have long-term impacts. And so that, that's exciting to me. Yeah. And if you have the finances, I mean, look for a coach, look for a consultant that can help you get the results that you're looking for that can help you look at, okay, what are your talents, your skills, what resources do you have? And then let's, let's work on shifting these things to, to create new opportunities. Yes, absolutely. So, before I ask you my last question, where can we go to learn more about you, learn more about the impactful work that you're doing? And for those that are interested in engaging with you, how do they find out more about you? Yes. Um, you can let's get connected on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I hang out on LinkedIn. And then the other area is Facebook. Go to my um, private Facebook group, Habits for Success. Join the group. We engage there. It's a group. The purpose of the group is really to support each other, to learn from each other. What business are you, are you in so that we can help each other and at the same time provide resources to support them in, in terms of what are the, the habits, the mindset that uh, we're looking for right now. And then I'm, I'm able to provide those resources and other people provide resources as well. Fantastic. All right. Well, we'll make sure that we link to those in the show notes. So here is my final question to you. On a scale of zero to 100, with 100 being fully realized potential, where are you today? Oh my God, that's a a really good question, you know, because I see myself as being uh, in the 60s because I think that we have so much potential and we don't utilize it all. Interesting. Well, because of your response, I'm going to ask you a part B to that question. (laughs) So what obstacles, if any, are holding you back from becoming the best version of you? You know, it's looking at those different areas. Remember I shared about, you know, am I a 10 on my relationships? Am I a 10 on my finances? Am I a 10 on my health? Am I a 10 
uh, when it comes to parenting? Am I at 10 when it comes to um, spiritual practice? And looking at all those areas, it's like, you know, I'm not. I think I'm averaging high 60s, close to 70. Mm -hmm. There's still a higher percentage that I can uh, dive deep. And it's, again, taking that time. And what I've been saying that I've been craving is solitude. Taking that time to to really sit in solitude and look at where I'm going to focus on next and how I'm going to do it. So what's holding me back is making the time to create that space. Love that response. Thank you. And I wanted to thank you also for joining us today on Business Minds Coffee Chat. I'm excited about our relationship and where this could potentially lead. I appreciate you taking the time to, to, to be with us today. And I look forward to continuing to learn and grow with you and participating in some future workshops of yours. Great. Thank you so much, Jay. It's been a pleasure. Fantastic. And for the rest of you, thank you so very much for watching. If you found value in this episode, please like and share with your friends. And until next time, stay healthy and optimistic, keep learning and growing, and remember that transformative change in your life and business begins with you, and nothing happens until you take action. And we'll see you next time. Jay. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consultant. Jay Shear. Jay Shear. Business Consulting. 